Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here in SC15 in Austin, Texas at the Penguin Computing Booth. And I'm here with Phil Percorny. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good. It's uh, an exciting uh, uh, event for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys got a lot going on, but uh, this one in particular we're going to see was a, a surprise to me. Open power from Penguin Computing. Yeah, that's right. We've heard from our customers, you know, periodically that uh, that IBM's power systems uh, address, you know, a niche market in the HPC space, and that wasn't one that we were addressing. So when IBM decided to open, you know, openly collaborate on their CPU designs, we thought this would be a great opportunity to get in, get our feet wet with it, see where it fits in the HPC market, and this is our first product, the uh, the Penguin Magma 2001. Okay, so so the first of many systems kind of thing, you're plugging into your existing uh, uh, infrastructure. Yeah, so yeah, we think that you know if this takes off, that we, there could be a lot of interesting follow-on products, both in our Tundra ES line as well as in a standard rack mount. This is a single socket system, yeah. has a lot of memory bandwidth, uh, which is really a hallmark of the power systems. Yeah. Is this got acceleration slots at all? Can you put a GPU in there, or it's not set up for that? Uh, no, there's no room in this chassis for a GPU, mm -hmm. um, but that is one of the really key interesting features about the open power architecture is their collaboration with NVIDIA and the possibility that in the future we will see platforms with NVLink native to the CPU mm -hmm. that will give the GPUs direct memory access and, and allow for cache coherent uh, memory access from the GPUs to the CPU systems. Okay, well, good, good. Well, just to switch gears, you guys had your big announcement about three labs using your Open Compute Project uh, platform, the Tundra. Do you have any of that hardware here in the booth? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go take a look over here at the rack. We've got some examples to show you. Okay, good. Okay. All right, Phil. So I guess we should remind folks about the, the CTS-1 procurement, the, the big deal you won with NNSA, right? Uh, three labs. I think one of the biggest HPC deals ever for Open Compute, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. In fact, it's probably the first yeah, major HPC deal for open compute, and uh, and it really validates the uh, the design and the architecture of open rack and how that that can bring advantages to the HPC market. Something that we've we've thought for a long time, and we spent a lot of time developing this. The labs Lawrence Livermore, Sandia, and Los Alamos collect together, pool their funds, and buy the same architecture so that they can gain shared experience by optimizing those clusters to perform as best as possible across all of those labs. Um, and this is they came to us, uh, you know, with an RFP request. Uh, and asked for some very specific things that, that are embodied in this particular sled that we've created for them. Uh, they wanted an Intel motherboard because they've had a lot of uh, success with that board, uh, boards from Intel in the past. Uh, so this includes a, uh, a board from Intel in our sheet metal design. Uh, and then they also asked for liquid cooling as an option because at altitude uh, it's kind of a challenge to cool uh, the CPUs and two of those labs are above 5,000 feet. So we've partnered with Asetek for this uh, liquid cooling solution. We've still got a by 16 Gen 3 slot here for their high performance interconnect. They'll be deploying a 100 gigabit networking solution, either from Mellanox, they haven't decided yet, okay. Mellanox or uh, Intel. Uh -huh. And uh, we think it looks really nice, and uh, a rack full of these things is going to be a, a joy to behold. Well, great. You know, I, I was reading about how they use these things, right? And this is kind of the workhorse for NNSA, right? They, they want to be able to run their workhorse jobs at the three labs and have identical kind of hardware so that they're not, you know, there's no differences, right? So, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that shared experience mm -hmm. of, of optimizing the clusters in all three labs uh, really enables them to, to optimize their, their cluster stack and their management methods for that hardware design. They, they claim that they had, uh, you know, if you look back a generation, their Sandy Bridge architecture was what they deployed previously. And that even the newer Ivy Bridge processors, clusters built on Ivy Bridge, couldn't outperform the, the deep optimizations they had done on Sandy Bridge. Uh, and, you know, so you could, they could have invested more time to, to do Ivy Bridge, but, but they already had these clusters of Sandy Bridge and were getting such good performance out of them after the optimizations they were able to do. Yeah, and, and, and I heard about the voltage and everything that you guys were using for open compute. That was actually very uh, copacetic with what they were doing there in their facility, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so the, they, they were looking, with this procurement, I think they were looking to do the same things that Open Compute has been trying to target, yeah. which is improving data center efficiency across the board. Do every do all the little things you can do that eventually all stack up to make real savings. So um, many of the labs will be deploying 277 volt, 480 high voltage three phase AC yeah. uh, to power these shelves, and that's enabled by the power shelf that's a separate unit in these, in these deployments with the 12 volt distribution bus bar, but with high voltage input we can support that 277 high voltage AC, mm -hmm. which eliminates a transformer, improves overall efficiency. Yep. It also means that these rectifiers 
uh, can run in their more optimum efficiency range rather than what you would see in a typical server where you might have a power supply that's only half loaded or maybe even only 15 or 20 percent loaded uh, depending on the design. Um, and uh, our partner Emerson has done a lot of really interesting things with this power shelf that's interest to other customers in terms of built-in batteries, UPS capability, high voltage DC capabilities uh, that are enabled that then transparently sort of effortlessly become available to all of these shelves that we've already talked about because the power shelf is separated. They don't care where the power comes from ultimately, they just care that they get 12 volt from the bus bar. Okay, Phil, what are we looking at here? So this is the side of open compute you, most, you typically won't see because this is the back of the rack and there's no user serviceable parts in the back of the rack. Except in this case, for CTS-1, we've engineered with our partner Asetech a liquid-to-liquid -liquid heat exchanger that allows us to extract 60% of the heat from the nodes directly to liquid uh, and lighten the load and also make it much easier to deploy these clusters at the elevations that Los Alamos and Sandia are at above 5,000 feet. Okay, so above, you know, at that high atmosphere, it's, it's hard to move enough air to cool off the machine? That's right. There are fewer <laughs> atoms of air, and so it just, they, they, don't, they don't absorb as much heat. Okay, okay. So, so this is a closed loop system. Do you need chilled water to run this then? So no, it can run from warm water. There's uh -huh. a facility connection there at the bottom, and then the, there are closed loops in, in, each, of the, uh, in each of the nodes. Okay. And then, so you don't have to run specially filtered water uh, into the nodes. Uh, each of those loops are closed. That's kind of a hallmark of the Asetech system.